Hey, greetings YouTube. Performance reviews where I give you the review from the technician's point of view. And today I have a Patriot vacuum system, not to be confused with the Patriot missile system uh, for the YouTube manual reviewers there. So what is this weird amalgamation of parts in front of us? Those who are familiar with vacuum cleaners and subscribe to the channel, which you definitely subscribe if you're not, will recognize a lot of the things in this video. For and foremost, probably being the EDK360, which is a Visselwork powerhead that I have done a review on already. I really like this powerhead, and it's something I daily drive in my house. I want to clarify as I'm talking in this video, when I refer to the SIBO ET1, I'm referring to this power nozzle here with the L shape. When I'm referring to the Visselwork EBK360, I am referring to this power nozzle in the D shape. Both of these are excellent power nozzles, and you can't go wrong with either one of these. The other thing I think that is going to look really familiar to a lot of people is this seems to be a central vacuum handle. So that's very interesting. And then of course, I think the other thing that's probably most obvious is this looks like a TriStar fitting there and the vacuum roughly has the profile of a TriStar. Now, if you're just tuning in for the first time and you don't know what a TriStar is, that's okay. I'm going to give you the skinny of Patriot and why they kind of exist as a company. And I say kind of because they've always just kind of been in this really small enterprise that just barely makes it, it seems. My understanding is that one of the guys who worked for TriStar became disgruntled and wanted to go make his own vacuum. And thus, the Patriot was born sometime in the 80s and uh, kind of stayed the same ever since. They've had a few different colors. Unlike the TriStar, they have a fiberglass body. It's, it's, it's very strange. It, it's an upgrade from the Magnolite, but it's not really any lighter. In fact, it's one of the heaviest canisters I think I've reviewed on the channel so far. So fast forward to today, and why you might be watching this, is you may have had a door-to-door -door salesman or some sort of multi-level marketing person sell you one of these and the question you might have come to this video is is this machine worth three thousand plus dollars and the answer is hell no but this machine probably is worth looking at its feature set what it comes with this machine is probably in 2022 worth between 800 and a thousand dollars a feature set however it's still missing many modern features and i think the other vacuums in that price range will probably spank this any day of the week. So to, to just sum up the value proposition, uh, I've seen these sell for as low as $1,200 and as high as like $3,500 in, in recent years. So again, $1,200, I think it's still questionable. However, if you were looking for a used canister and you saw one of these for sale and working order for a hundred bucks, it would absolutely be worth picking up. So that's my opinion on the value proposition of this product and kind of where it sits in the market. And with that being said, let's go over what the machine is and what it comes with. We're gonna start with the body of the machine and this review is really gonna be focused not on the power head, but on the machine and the use, user experience with this machine because the power head I already have a review on. Heck, the hose is straight from a central back. So I would say, if you're watching this review and seriously considering this, you want to go take a look and I'll, I'll link them here. I have reviews on both the SIBO ET1 powerhead available with this canister and the EBK360 powerhead. Again, both great powerheads, but let's get into the body of the canister. All right, I'm going to take you on just a tour of the body of the canister and what this is. First of all, we have our handle and the cord. There is no electric cord winder like any other canister that would be in this price range. So you manually wind the cord on top, and then you release it there. The thing right here, I think this is probably one of their latest improvements. This one thankfully does not have it. They have an LCD screen. It's really cheap. It's really cheesy. You can go take a look on their website that goes here that basically tells you to change your filter or your bag. It doesn't do much. There's no speed control with this machine. And with the suction numbers that this machine has that you'll see later, you probably will want a speed control. 
there is no suction relief. So that is one big feature that is missing, especially if you use the tools a lot. The power switch is located very awkwardly back here, and it's really hard to hit with your foot. It's hard to get in there, and I really wish they had kept the power switch up here where it was on the TriStar. The other thing I want to talk about is the tumor. <laughs> uh, or it might look like a carburetor filter if you're a little bit older and know what that looks like. So this is a very large HEPA filter, which at some point was a afterthought that they started putting on the machines, as you can see. It just kind of screws in there like so. Very, very strange. Why this does have the ability to filter through this, not all the air is actually sealed in this machine, so not all the air actually makes it to this filter, unfortunately. However, you can also use this port as a blower port on the vacuum if for some reason you wanted to do that. And we have a clearer shot of where the power switch is. This, again, is just like the end of the hose has been riveted on here and there, there's no gaskets or seals here, unfortunately. There is a bumper around the machine. The wheel setup is probably the biggest criticism I've had upon using this in my house. They have these center wheels which catch on everything and basically cause it not to maneuver properly. I might do a future video where I take these off, but basically you got some cheap casters from an office chair and then this wheel in the middle, which is kind of awkward, making this thing basically a lumber cart at Home Depot while you're trying to maneuver it around your house. On the front of the machine, there is a power port. That's right, folks, for the price of this, it is not direct connect. You actually have to plug in this pigtail and plug in, screw in this hose, which is kind of awkward because now your hose is sticking out, I'll give you an idea with my arm, just how much that sticks out from the vacuum that really causes some maneuverability problems when you're using it in the house and in tight spaces. I would say this vacuum is best suited for wide open areas, but it's not suited for commercial use. So just do with that as you please. The badging on this machine, I've always thought was kind of cheesy, but kind of fun to the era you had made in the US since 1989. All right. Cool. Problem with that is very little of this is actually made in the U.S. The body is made in the U.S. The motor is uh, either going to be made in Mexico or China, so that, there's that. Uh, the power head, at least mine, this is probably a Polish power head if I had to guess. Oh, no, this is actually a German one, but those are made in Germany. The seat power heads are obviously made in Germany, and the hose is made in Canada. So, again, not a whole lot made in the US, but you know, again, I applaud them for trying. Now, when we get into the bag, this is where things are going to be a lot different if you're familiar with Tristar. There is this rubber dingus, and you can get these bags as an open top bag, as you currently see, and you can interchange Tristar bags with it. So if you want to put the Tristar HEPA bags in here, you can. However, they do make a closed top bag, and I would highly recommend running that if you have one of these. So this is just a TriStar bag, and I, I have a review up on the TriStar, if you're not familiar. These bags lose efficiency very fast, and you don't actually get to fill these like most modern vacuum bags. You have a pre-filter uh, bag, and then you have just the same dome filter you'd find uh, any commercial backpack sort of thing. Um, and you can see the base of this. Um, Why it's painted, you can kind of see the, the, the fiberglass in there. Um, and I, I can reach and touch the motor. I can't see the motor markings from here, unfortunately, uh, but I, I can assure you that this motor is not made in the US. So that just goes like that. You have your bag, your outer bag. You have a really tight fit on there. Again, this is interchangeable with the TriStar bag. All the stuff is interchangeable with TriStar uh, in here, which I've always thought was kind of interesting. 
I do want to apologize. I do have a video where I put a TriStar HEPA filter on this. I don't recommend doing that. It doesn't give it enough airflow. So for anybody who's seen my channel before, just to mention, don't, don't use the TriStar exhaust filter on this. There's no tool storage aboard the canister, and the tools are going to come with a stub tube awkwardly glued to them. However, if you do just have standard tools, you can just push standard tools on. The tool set is a very generic Vissel work tool set. Nothing bad to say about that. And like I said, they want the tools to button lock on there. I don't really see much value in that personally. I would rather have it without the adapter and be able to get into a tighter space. One other criticism I have of Patriot is because they like to use this S1, you don't have the ability to directly connect everything easily. You have a pigtail here, and I just think that's sloppy. You could replace this whole section with a direct connect wand, and it would be a better user experience and probably save the manufacturing costs. Let's see how much working vacuum the Patriot gets. Keep in mind, all these tests are a mile above sea level. I can confirm that this machine does make a little bit more power at sea level, but 45 inches of working vacuum is excellent, though only 70 inches of usable seal vacuum. Definitely not as high as some of the competitors. So we've switched to the studio microphone. You're going to hear the real sound of the machine as it's picking up. The microphone's about a meter away for sound reference. Let's see how it does. And we're going to be doing our standard pickup test, which of course is flour, cat litter, breakfast cereal, and fresh pet hair. Well, as you can see, it picked everything up with ease. And that is one thing the Patriot has going for it. It has plenty of power and a great power nozzle pairing. And spoiler alert, I'm not going to be doing this with the ET1. The SIBO ET1 powerhead is going to give you exactly the same results here. They really did do their research with every powerhead they've paired this with over the years. They also use some older Vissel work designs in the SIBO ETC. Again, all great powerheads. Though their new pairings do have height adjustments, which I would highly recommend. So if you do pick up an older one of these, you probably want to upgrade the head if you have any sort of medium to higher power carpeting. And just for reference, this is soft carpet. We're going to see how the Patriot does on hard floor. Once again, we have flour, breakfast cereal, cat litter, and fresh pet hair. We're going to have the brush roller off and on the lowest setting. The Patriot does come with a very basic hard floor tool but I suspect the majority of people will want to see how the power head performs. Well, it left a little bit of flour behind with the power nozzle, but it picked up everything else with ease, especially the pet hair. I'll put a link in the description to this floor tool, but because Patriot uses that standard 32 millimeter fitting, you can upgrade it with a Visor D330. Again, I have a whole video on this nozzle, but I would highly recommend it if you have a Patriot. Add some maneuverability to your vacuum cleaner. So this is one of the biggest things I was most curious about doing this review which is how does it do on stairs, being kind of the awkward shape that it is. It's all right to lift up and down stairs. The hood is heavy and bulk, bulky. I think the biggest thing is the hose sticks out almost a foot from the canister. So if you were doing narrow stairs, this would be pretty awkward. Now, something I want to give Patriot real props for is they just used a standard inch and a quarter central vacuum fitting which means even though I don't have the Patriot tools, which are just standard Vissel work tools with stub tubes glued on them so that they lock with the button lock, that means I can accurately represent what this machine would have come with, even though I don't have the actual tools with it. So I'm just going to use a Vissel work upholstery tool. We have some fresh dog hair and some breakfast cereal. Let's see how it does. I think it's no shock that this machine has plenty of power to pick that stuff up. 
But again, on the stairs, you do run into all sorts of risks that really aren't as, that probably illustrates exactly what I was talking about. These sorts of things really aren't prominent with the other canisters that we see on the market today. The Patriot cord is 35 feet long, which is one of the longest I've seen on a canister vacuum maybe with the SIBO D4 beating it out. With the Patriot vacuum, you have a large operating radius, which makes this ideal for larger spaces. The lack of a cord reel at this price point is insane. The fact that you're still manually winding your cord on a machine that costs this much just doesn't make sense to me. And on top of that, there really doesn't seem to be enough room on the cord hook here for the entire 35 foot cord. So if you're not careful, you can smash the HEPA filter. I wanna talk about maneuverability with the Patriot because that's probably its biggest weak point. When you are maneuvering this machine, yeah, it does that. It does a lot of fish tailing. It's very awkward. When you go around something, it's not the easiest. This definitely could be better, especially uh, when we compare this to some of its competitors, where it really falls short in its maneuverability. The wheel setup is nonsensical. The casters are great. They're not particularly high quality, but they're great. It's these wheels in the middle that really limit this machine. It's designed to kind of teeter-totter and maneuver, kind of like that lumber cart you use at Home Depot, and that's kind of what makes this thing awkward. To use in the house. I think if they had shortened the wheelbase and just gone with casters, this would be significantly better. As far as low places go, this is no different than using any other EBK 360, though I wish Patriot would use the newer style with the low profile pedals. That being said, if you're really interested in getting low places, I would encourage you to take a look at the SIBO ET1 powerhead option that they have available, which gets a little bit lower. Once again, this S wand really hinders the performance and maneuverability of this powerhead setup. So let's talk about that funky handle. What this funky handle is, is it's remnants from when they used to use a different style of powerhead that didn't have a swivel neck. So the idea is that you could get low. The problem is when this has the EBK360 or the ET1 powerhead, it doesn't make any sense. So when you're getting low, you're gonna end up having to twist it like this to get low, and why it will get as low as any other EBK360. Having this extra S-Bend kind of makes it a little inconvenient. The other thing I'd like to talk about are these wands are long. Now, I'm six foot three tall. I never complain about anything being too tall, and I will say these wands are particularly long, and that makes it a little bit more awkward. Just as an example, I took my power nozzle, my central vacuum, EBK 360 that I vacuum my house often with. Just for comparison, this is the taller setting where I have it. It's too tall for my life. This is where Patriot has put this non-telescoping wand in. This could lead to problems in smaller spaces with shorter people. So something to be mindful about when you're using the Patriot. All right, I have to talk about this annoyance why I've been using this. Every time I try to hit this button, you see the machine? moves away from you and your foot slips off the switch here because there's no texture or anything to get good planting. Again, this switch placement would be far better if they just drilled a hole here and put a simple push switch. Final thoughts on the Patriot vacuum. The value proposition of this is probably the biggest hurdle. Again, at most dealers wanting $3,000 for this vacuum, that is central vacuum territory. There are vacuums at half this cost that give you a lot more for your money. There are vacuums at a third of this cost that give you a lot more for your money. That being said, if you are in the market for a canister vacuum and you see one of these on your marketplace at your thrift store for less than $100, I'd say go ahead and pick it up. Even if you need to throw another $100 into it, you are getting quite a lot of vacuum on the used market. And that's kind of where this thing sits. 
this would be a recommendation for somebody who has a house on a budget and needs to get the whole house clean. However, I would say definitely avoid this if you have a condo or an apartment. A good friend of mine, his mom has one of these in her condo and she absolutely hates it and she absolutely has buyer's remorse for paying as much money as she did. And that is a story that I hear repeated for people who have bought these over the years, over and over again. So I'm going to leave it at that. If you got something on this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you have a Patriot, I'd love to hear from you. Tell me what your user experience is. Definitely comment below. If you just want to talk about vacuum cleaners or other things vacuum cleaner related, go check out our Discord where we talk vacuum cleaners all day long. If you're looking for supplies for your Patriot, I'm going to link below to some things that help support the channel. If you really want to support the channel, we also have a Patreon that's linked below as well. Again, big thank you to my friend R for lending this to me. Have yourself a wonderful day. Thank <laughs> you.